to over riders like Lolland Fignon and Bernard Eno, Pascal Simon, Sean Kelly and Stephen Roach because he'll need this sort of time gap to stay ahead in the time trials to follow and the long hot days which will surely come in a week's time in the Alps. The face of a hungry man, Robert Miller, pushes on the pedals, stretches the riders out. Will he decide to attack the rest of the riders or will he try to win the sprint on the steep slopes of Guzenage? Miller has a lovely rhythm going. Bernardo comes by him. And Bernardo knows these roads so well. He lives not far away. He won the yellow jersey in the Tour de France here a couple of years ago. He only held it for a day before he lost it to Bernard Eno. And that was the time when uh, the same finish indeed where Miller came last year in Luchon uh, to win the most romantic stage of the Tour de France. It's been a long way from Paris to the Pyrenees, Robert Miller. He's had to survive nine hour days in the saddle. There's pure speed of the top athletes of the race, the type of speed that Miller dislikes intensely. Holding in, waiting for the day the roads climbed 6,000 feet into the sky. They were the days that Miller were looking for, and now that day has come. Miller has joined the attack. He's been on the attack for something like two hours until only four riders have remained at the front. They were eight. Bazo crashed on the descent. The others were dropped off on the fierce climb of the Col de la Cour just about half an hour ago. And now these four riders have formed a strange group at the front. Didier at the back will not work at all because he's trying to break up the rhythm of these other three, working in defence of Laurent Fignon, his team leader. Robert Miller will be given his head. His Peugeot team believe that Miller, with all the breaks that every rider needs in the Tour de France, could win this Tour. He needs at least three or four good days in the mountains to do that. And there we are, going uphill. And remember, it's uphill at 45 kilometers an hour. That's something like 25 miles an hour on the lower slopes of this final climb to the finish at the ski station at Guzé-Neige. How these riders turn out these speeds day after day is difficult to believe. The sun again beating down unmercilessly unmerc on them. And now behind we have the main field. Well, this is a long stretch of pacemaking by Robert Miller. I hope he doesn't overdo it with confidence because the rider going through now, Jean-René Bernadeau, is uh, a rider very much with a bit between his teeth. He's coming to an area which he knows very, very well indeed. Miller, of course, also knows the area because he's visited the area and trained here. Such has been his enthusiasm to succeed. He's an extraordinary character because... Uh, he came to cycle racing because he happened to go past the shop window when the Tour de France was on a rental television set. He watched it and thought he would like to ride the Tour de France one day. At that time, he wasn't even a cyclist. And since then, he joined the Glasgow Wheelers. He became a cyclist. He became twice the British Amateur Champion. He went to live in France. And now he's the number one rider for one of the top teams in France. And that is a success story if you like. And now he's living up to his name because here in the Pyrenees he's not just mixing it with the best, he's dictating the pattern. This is the main field, or the remnants of the main field I should say, coming up containing as far as we know all of the leaders. I haven't seen the figure of Stephen Roach in this breakaway. I'd be very surprised if he hadn't made it, but you never know. It certainly uh, is strange not seeing the face of Stephen Roach at the front of the bunch. A news coming in, in fact, that Stephen Roach is having difficulty. So it could well be he's not in that group, but the attack has come. Now, will this be an epic chase by the Spaniard as it was a year ago when he chased Robert Miller all the way home? Well, there's an attack for you. 300 yards ago, Delgado was with this group. I think a car manufacturer will be pleased to produce a machine that can accelerate at that sort of speed on the mountain, and Delgado has gone clear. What a breakaway by him. 
if he can get over the top he descends very rapidly and if he's leaving it late there is still something like two miles to the summit he could well catch Miller he could well catch Bill Scholten and Bernardo this Tour de France is so exciting every day something different happens we've even been treated to the unique happening of Stephen Roach's wife presenting him with a baby when the race came to within 12 kilometers of her hospital well if these riders have given the news and that car alongside them is the organizational car so they have a radio they will know Delgado is chasing if they happen to tell these three Delgado is chasing it might well inspire an attack an attack by Miller Miller is trying to attack coming towards the end of the stage Miller has given everything he's gone clear searches for the gears goes up a sprocket Robert Miller is attacking towards the end of this 11th stage of the Tour de France he's gambled on everything Robert Miller I thought lower down he was showing some signs of fatigue he's waited long enough Robert Miller has only two riders to get rid of now through a brilliant piece of precision riding and here is another rider on the attack now this is Luis Herrera the top Colombian rider making a late bid for victory lower down the slopes he's clear now of the bunch which contains Fignon and um, Mark Maddio and the Bernard Eno he's now in pursuit of Delgado but this is the man in charge of them all Robert Miller he did it remember in the Pyrenees a year ago I think he's done nothing but think about repeating the feat in the Tour de France this year since that great day he's not a big-headed man at all but when you speak to him confidence oozes from him and it looks as though Herrera has caught Delgado so this Colombian is flying up the mountain the rider that Miller has done well to slip today because would he have beaten him or will he beat him even Delgado has been caught by Herrera and Herrera isn't waiting for Delgado and Delgado is a superb climber Herrera seems to be better oh will the end of the stage of the Tour de France ever come for Miller it's been an eternity 10 miles up to the summit of this year's Tour de France in the Pyrenees a stage of 226 kilometers about 140 miles and there we are Herrera is catching the men that Miller was with so what a decision that was by Miller to leave these two riders behind on the lower slopes because this is Bernardo and the other rider is Bill Scholten and they're not going to have anything in their legs when this brilliant Colombian comes by I would imagine he'll go wide he won't give them the belly he can't go wide because somebody's in the way out the way and a little attack, Bernardo is looking the wrong way, but it doesn't matter, there's nothing left in the legs of Bernardo. But Miller is almost at the finish now. Herrera has left it too late. And this is going to be Scotland's day in the Tour de France. Scotland's only professional cyclist, Robert Miller, has done it again in the Pyrenees for the second year. And as Miller said, this stage, in his opinion, wasn't as hard as the one he won in Le Chon a year ago. And he was a little bit worried it may not be hard enough. <laughs> well, he's proved to himself that it's pretty hard for everybody else today. And as the finish is tense and waiting, because they know this battle is on, they're cheering Herrera as he inches towards Miller. And as we watch this dramatic chase, we're looking now here for the white jersey of Miller. And there he is, and there is the red kite above him. The sign that'll make his heart beat twice. It means 609 yards to the finish. Cheers all the way now from a brave man who runs alongside Miller, shouts him on, a sharp left-hand bend coming on. There's no respite. It's climbing all the way. Just one hairpin bend below him is Herrera. More water down his neck. That spectator must not touch the rider, of course. Well, Robert Miller has done it. He's done everything he said he was going to do. The little man, the gorbals with the big heart, the powerful legs.
He'll be the toast of the Peugeot Cycles team tonight. They've wanted something. They've had a poor tour so far after a good beginning for them by Alan Piper, who finished third twice on the opening days of this race. They've done nothing since. Miller has unleashed all his anger today on the Tour de France. He's tamed the giants of the Pyrenees. And now under the kilometre kite goes Herrera. That's how close it is. Something like 300 metres behind Miller. That'll do nicely, thank you. Miller's going to get this stage. And does he deserve it? He was in a group of eight riders when they came over the Col de la Cour. And one by one, Miller's seen them out the back door. And they've all been caught by two other heroes today. Herrera of Colombia and Delgado of Spain. And that will sh should well be the three that come over first. Although message is coming up now to us that Lauren Finjon has counter-attacked and is fourth on the road. So, what a battle this has been. This is the Tour de France. The most open race for years. There has been no one dominant. Jan Ross, you remember the rider who won the longest stage of 211 miles into Bordeaux on Saturday? He gave up today. He's already on his way home to Holland. It's applause for Robert Miller now. And look over his shoulder. He'll see nobody but the motorcycles, our cameraman who sat with him now religiously for the last kilometre up the climb. We'll see behind, we'll see Felix Leviton, the man who's over 70 years of age, who's organised this Tour de France for over 50 years. He's seen some heroics, but he'll agree that he's seeing one today in the mode of Scotland's Robert Miller. Miller's face grimaces. Leviton watches his little red hat. The organiser of this great event watches the white jersey of Miller. And Leviton himself is not afraid to go alongside and just say, Allez Robert, because he likes winners. He likes riders to come home first and do it on their own. And that's what Miller's doing here. Now the plaques which say just yards to go to the line. Miller can prepare himself now for the salute. The two arms are all we want to see now, and there they are. Miller's won the stage in the Tour de France. The tears, the glimpses, creak up smiles and tears of joy.